Hey, good evening, friends. Happy Thanksgiving. I hope you're excited and looking forward to tomorrow. Well, tonight we're going to have a, a short Bible study and a time of uh, worship together. We're going to be talking about ways to change Thanksgiving into thanks living. And, uh, and we'll get into that study in just a few minutes. First of all, we want to spend some time in praise and worship. And I'll, so I'll be back in just a few minutes. And I love you, Lord. Days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Now, my life, you have been You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful
Well, welcome back, friends. I hope you enjoyed and participated in that time of worship. So as I mentioned tonight, we're going to look at some ways to turn Thanksgiving into thanks living. So while Thanksgiving Day is a special, awesome kind of day, pumpkin pie, right? Especially it's awesome for the Christian. It, it, it truly should only be a starting point. Thanks living is much more grand than Thanksgiving. As Nancy DeMoss Wogelmoth wrote, she said, Thanksgiving really should be thanks living. Should be a way of life, morning, noon, and night, continually, forever, giving thanks to the Lord. I like that challenge, don't you? You see, thanks living is, it's really a lifestyle showing gratitude in action every day and at all times. Thanks living begins in the mind and filters through our attitudes into our heart and then it plays itself out in our daily actions. I believe, I'm very convinced that there are many ways that we can build on Thanksgiving Day to cultivate God honoring thanks living as a part of our daily routine. So let's think about, first of all, the foundation of thanks living. Jesus is the foundation of a lifetime of thanksgiving. Our gratitude should be and is rooted in him, including all we have and who we are. Because of Jesus' sacrificial work in us, we should be thankful always. Our foundation must be in the Lord, seeking him and his righteousness above all else, first, as a matter of fact. Lack of, ad, of gratitude, a lack of gratitude was evidenced in mankind's initial disobedience, and it continues today in everyone and all who rebel against God. Gratitude, you see, is a response to the great mercy that we've been shown by him. People, they may or may not express gratitude as a result of common grace, you, know, you might remember only one of the 10 lepers that Jesus healed returned to thank him. But a thankful heart should be one of the primary identifying characteristics of a believer. No matter how choppy the sea becomes, a believer's heart should be buoyed by constant praise and gratitude to the Lord. Thankfulness is, in fact, uh, it's a command for the Christ follower, as noted by Nancy DeMoss when she writes, God has commanded it for our good and his glory. She says God is, God's command is to be thankful, not in a, a threatening demand of a tyrant kind of way, but rather it is the invitation of a lifetime, the opportunity for us to draw near to him at any moment of the day. Wow, friends, that, that right there, that description is truly thanks living. Now let's think for a minute about the framework of thanks living. It starts with our, our habit of gratitude. It forms the framework for thanks living. Authentic gratitude builds on the foundation of Christ because we receive all things from his hands. We we must learn from the Israelites whose gratitude was mm, often, almost always, wavering and conditional. They were, they were thankful if God delivered them or provided something for them, but murmuring and grumbling and complaining if he didn't deliver them, if he didn't provide exactly what they wanted when they wanted it. Grace, friends, on the other hand, grace teaches us to actively pursue and practice gratitude. We count our past and present blessings and we become receptive to what God is doing in and through our lives in the present, in the here and now. We are grateful not only for what we have and what we can do, but also for the many things that did not touch our lives in a negative way. Some of the burdens or the hurts and the troubles that didn't come into our life. We become grateful for those. And then, and then with maturity, we will even begin to, to learn how to be grateful for the trials, knowing that Romans 8.28 is true. 
when we're told there that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purposes. So no matter what our circumstances, Dr. Jer David Jeremiah says this, he says, we can find a reason to be thankful regardless of our circumstances. Well, author J.I. Packer said it this way. He said, the habit of celebrating the greatness and graciousness of God yields an endless flow of thankfulness, joy, and zeal. Praise be to God. And he nailed that baby right on the head. You see, gratitude comes hard in our entitlement culture of this 21st century. We often have ungrateful mindset because we think we're entitled to so many things. But friends, the truth is we must teach our souls the truth and choose thanks living. Pastor Chuck Swindoll says it this way. He says, gratitude is a decision of the will. Deciding to be thankful is no easy task. It takes work. And I say amen to that. So the truth is, friends, we must learn to desire the giver more than his gifts and to thank him for his steadfast love and goodness that is a part of our lives every day. He is, as the song says, he's a good, good father. And our daily habit should be thanking him for all the small things, those simple pleasures that he slides into our life on a daily basis. So let's think for a minute about the focus of thanksgiving, thanks living. In a culture of more, there's a lot of whining and grumbling. Seems we're not happy with our many blessings and we focus instead on our losses or our lack. We dwell on what is difficult or inconvenient and take things for granted. But like the Apostle Paul, we can learn to be content and that is the focus of thanks living. It's not how much we have, but how much we enjoy what makes us happy. You see, friends, God is too good to be unkind, and he is far too wise to be mistaken. And when we cannot trace his hand, we must trust his heart. His heart is always for us. His heart is always what's best for us. Most Christ followers need an attitude check. You see, God has promised to supply all of our needs, as Elizabeth Elliot said. And then she said, what we don't have now, we don't need. <laughs> Pretty simple, isn't it? One of the most valuable experience, exercises in my life was, was to sit down and go through all of my closets and shelves and examine all my stuff. <laughs> and it occurred to me in the process of that that millions of people desperately craved even a little bit of what I have. People want food, a job, education, medical care, peace, and freedom. And I have all of those things. How can I possibly be discontent? How can I not express gratitude? So the faithfulness that comes in thanks living, let's think about that. Though the Israelites were, were encouraged to remember that they had spiritual amnesia. Not that they had it, but they did have it and they couldn't remember. They had to be reminded. They often would forget what God had done for them. Our God is faithful. And scriptures encourage us to remember how his, he is sovereignly working on our behalf to recount and to ponder those things. Because the truth is, God is in control. We learned that in Philippians chapter one, didn't we? Bible teacher K. Arthur said this, and therefore in everything I can give thanks, not because of the situation, but because of the one who directs and rules over every situation. Thanks living purposefully seeks out what God is doing in every situation and then treasures and celebrates those things. We need to train our minds to become more sensitive to the blessings of God so we can sniff out the tiniest things our faithful God has done for us. 
One pastor called this being bloodhounds for good. <laughs> I like that. I like that terminology, bloodhounds for good. Though many may scoff at the naivety of Pollyanna and her glad game, I learned from my youth to follow her example and have determined to search out the many ways that God has been faithful in my life. So many ways that I miss on the surface. One year, one year at our house, we, we created a blessing jar. And every day we try to write down uh, reasons for gratitude on that particular day. We just write them down and then put them in the jar. And then on Thanksgiving Day, we pull them out one by one and read through all the things we'd been thankful for over the course of the last year. You see, thankfulness for God's faithfulness overflowed in my heart, in our hearts on that day. We also need to tell others about God's faithfulness. Tell them, just tell them what God has done for you. Just as Israel piled up mounds of stones as memorials to God, for God's care, we, we can pass on meaningful stories of blessing to our children and our grandchildren and those who sit close to us in church or at other community functions. So let's think about the feeding of thanks living. Feeding thanks living. Thanks living should flow out of us to touch others. Just as grumbling is contagious, so also is gratitude. We feed or nourish others by verbalizing our appreciation and nourish their souls with positive statements. Scripture says, says it this way, therefore, encourage one another and build one another up. So we can nourish our spouse and our children, our neighbors, our church family, and so many others by simply acknowledging them, admiring them, and treasuring them. We can pray and thank God for them and their presence in our lives, and we can do it in, as they hear us pray for them. We might share words of gratitude about others on social media, place an encouraging note in our kids or child's lunchbox or write a special note for our spouse, put it on the bathroom mirror. Hmm, I'm not very good at this, but I'm working on it. Diedrich Bonhoeffer, he said this, it's only with gratitude that life becomes rich. Pastor Tim Keller takes that thought just a step further and he says this, it is one thing to be grateful, it is another to give thanks. Gratitude is what you feel. Thanksgiving is what you do. Wow, that's great. So let's think about the feasting of thanks living. The feasting of thanks living. Part of the focus of the modern day Thanksgiving day is the feasting. I'm thinking about that turkey tomorrow already. Representing the gratitude for the abundance in our lives. Christians find their abundance in Christ because of the gospel message of redemption and recognition of this abundance leads to thanks living. Let me give us just a, a bit of history here. The Lord gave Israel pictures of how they, should, how they should live with gratitude for God's provisions all year long. You see, there's, there's seven Old Testament feasts or festivals that were closely aligned to Israel's harvest seasons, reminding them on a regular basis of God's ongoing care. These Jewish feasts foreshadowed the coming Messiah and his ministry. The four springtime feasts point back to what Christ accomplished during his first coming, and the three fall feasts point towards Christ's second coming. Isn't that interesting? I, I would encourage you, challenge you to, to take some time and do a little study on the feasts found in the Old Testament that really move forward into the New Testament as well. Jesus turned one of these feasts, the Passover celebration, into a, a very special memorial of remembrance and gratitude. We typically call that communion. In many churches today, 
the regular offering of the celebration of Christian communion, the Lord's Supper, sometimes we call it the table of the Lord, it encourages us to gratefully remember what Christ accomplished in redeeming us on the cross, conquering death and sin in his resurrection. And we look forward to his imminent return. We just, we can't allow that to become just a religious observation, but it should always bring a, a sense of overwhelming gratitude to our hearts. You see, it's, it's an integral integrant, ingredient, bleh, excuse me. It's an integral ingredient of our worship to proclaim and celebrate the gospel message until Jesus comes. When Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me, it should move us to deep gratitude for his grace and mercy and the incredible sacrifice he made so that we can know life and life abundantly. Let's think for a minute about the family and thanksgiving. Psalm 111 and verse one says this, praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Gratitude, friends, is at the very heart of Christian community. It is always better to give thanks in the presence of others, thereby multiplying the joy. We enjoy what we have more by sharing it with others. And Christians, we're supposed to cultivate gratitude together within the family of God. It is, it is God's will that his people develop an attitude of gratitude, and this is more easily developed in an atmosphere of mutual love and accountability as we are lifting up and helping and serving our brothers and sisters as they also practice thanksgiving in the difficult seasons of life. Quite a challenge, isn't it? Now let's think about for a second the formation of thanks living. Sometimes thanks living is more easily caught than taught. When we see it in action, it's easier to learn it. The meaningful traditions of Thanksgiving Day, they're, friends, they're important to spark a lifestyle of gratitude and they can bring bind families together. But us Christ followers, we are wise to think beyond just these traditions and really plan for a legacy of gratitude. You see, the formation of thanksgiving or thanksgiving in our families begins with daily modeling of gratitude and, and showing appreciation or speaking appreciation for people, including saying things like please and thank you and practicing common courtesies of life. We, we can train our children, our grandchildren through just the course of daily circumstances as we model for them right attitudes. But we also teach our families to come to God with thankful hearts and speak of his works with joy. We can explain why thanking God is so very important and we cast the vision for praise-filled worship as we do that. This may, be, this may be a little hard for those who have never experienced a legacy of gratitude themselves. I was blessed to have a grandpa that was, man, he was so grateful all the time for what God had done in his life. If you don't have that same kind of legacy, in that case, formation of a grateful heart begins by searching the scriptures for truth about gratitude and then intentionally choosing thanks living as a part of your daily life. And then number nine, the freedom in thanks living. You see, the word gratitude comes from the same word in the Greek language as freedom. Gratis equals free. Gratitude is the freeing expression of a free heart toward one who freely gave. You see, God freely gives his children life and breath, wisdom, peace, grace. He gives them their heart's desires when they delight themselves in him and so many other 
good gifts. Gratitude, it recognizes that everything we are and have has come from God. The psalmist tells us, in him we live and move and have our being. I remember when we used to sing that often at church. The beautiful truth is this, friends. While without Christ we can do nothing, in Christ we are free and can do all things because God freely gives his children all things to enjoy. And we, in turn, can freely share all those things with others. We'll wrap it up with one more thought. The fruit of thanks living. Dr. George Bannister says this. He says, an attitude of thanksgiving bears positive transformational fruit in the believer's life. I believe, friends, that we see this fruit in the great psalm of worship, Psalm 100. It is truly a psalm for thanksgiving. In the first two verses of Psalm 100, we see that God transforms our emotional condition when we are thankful. We become creatures of joy and gladness because we're thankful. And that's that first part of that verse or that, of that chapter. And then in verse 3, our focus changes. We find a greater purpose than just focusing and serving ourselves. We discover that life is truly all about God and not us. In verses four and five, we find our attitudes about circumstances being transformed. We acknowledge that the Lord is good and he is loving and faithful to us and to all generations. Praise be to God. This goes back to learning to be content learning to have contentment as a part of our lives on an ongoing basis. Another wonderful fruit of thanks living is our ability to witness to others. The early church, the apostles, and, and those who they were reaching with the message of Christ, that early church attracted unbelievers because of their lifestyle of thanks living. Scripture would tell us that they had glad and generous hearts and were praising God. And that demonstrated the power of God to transform lives. And this powerfully advanced the gospel message. Hallelujah. That's the fruit. As we live lives of thanksgiving, it demonstrates God's power in and through our lives and draws others to the kingdom. Well, we probably got a little longer than we needed to on a, on a Wednesday night before Thanksgiving. I hope that some of this connected in your heart and, and you'll pursue those things and, and with me make a more conscientious effort to live a life of thanksgiving. Let's close in prayer. Father, thank you for this night, for the truth of your word, that we can live a life of thanksgiving to honor you and to draw others to the kingdom of God. We can model it for our kids, our grandkids, for our neighbors, for our coworkers that don't know you yet. Lord, empower us by your spirit to be people who live thanks living. Lord, I pray for, for each one, uh, each celebration of Thanksgiving tomorrow, that there can be rest and great food and great fellowship among family members and friends, that your hand will be in every situation. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Friends, let me remind you, Sunday morning, we'll be back here again. Nine o'clock, Sunday school for kids and adults. Ten o'clock, our worship service. And this Sunday, we'll be wrapping up our last uh, week in the, in the book of Philippians. We'll wrap up that series on Sunday. Love to have you come and join us uh, on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Then I'll be back here again next Wednesday night with another time of worship and Bible study. Have a great night, friends. Happy Thanksgiving.